just going to do you a quick update to where I'm up to with me battery loco build. Uh, this is part four. Uh, if you haven't seen parts one, two, and three, I think I suggest you, you you have a look at them just to catch up on everything. I'll just briefly, I'll just briefly go through what I've what I've done in in them parts. What I'm doing, I'm I've just recently joined my model engineering club in January and. I'm doing a, I'm, I'm a complete novice at this, and I'm doing a, a battery loco, battery electric, electric loco, from point of view, a, a complete beginner's point of view. Uh, and I'm making it, as I've said in my past, uh, previous parts, from all items I've already got on stock in my garage, my bits of plate, I'm using all them up, welding them together, and I'll not, I'll not waffle on, uh, because it's all in in first three parts that, and where I'm up to at the moment, uh, <clears throat> I left you last time. I'd got a rolling chassis, and I was just about to start these these crank arms here and connecting rods. Well, as you can see, I've now finished them, and I've just fitted everything together, and and got it running nice and smooth. And I'm just I'm just about ready to do a test run. As you've seen in little introduction of this video, this clip. So I'm going to leave it on test for a, probably I don't know half an hour just to get everything running uh, and get bearings and bushes a chance just to bed themselves in. So uh, I'm going to turn it over in a minute. I'll show you everything what I've done. I might have to pick camera up though to show you. Uh, so. That's all I'll do, so I'll just turn turn off for a, a second, which you'll not even notice, and then I'll turn it over and we'll we'll take it from there. Right, I've uh, I've just had to put a piece of cardboard at the back because the layer of front window are coming through, uh, some through window. Yeah, so like I was saying, I've done my crank arms, done my connecting rod, got my motor fitted, uh, done my my buffers, and. Uh, Basically, that's that's the rolling chassis now, more or less complete. And I've just got to test it for a while, and uh, I'll put it on test for about half an hour. So I'm just going to pick camera up and, and explain these crank rods to you. But before I do, I'll just I'll just uh, run through size quickly size of them again. <coughs> so I made these out of some uh, two and a quarter aluminium, and and they're half inch thick, four of, and then my connecting rods are made from aluminium, and that's six six and a half mil, so I'm assuming that's probably about a quarter, quarter thick, good quality aluminium. And before I before I explain how I fitted them, the important part of this this uh, little piece is the centres here on the crank on the on the pivot on the pivots of the crank. It's important that you get them within a within a, a couple of thou really on both sides so that they line up properly and they run freely. Because if if you don't get them lined up, you'll get tight spots. Now, I, I did get a couple of tight spots myself. I'm going to be honest because I've only fabricated this frame. So what I what I had to do. Is just to get that the tight spot off. I found out which which one was tight, and on the axle box, I just had to do a little bit of fine detail with 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 a smooth file, just to take a couple of thou out of one that slides, so it so it would run freely. So that's how I got out of that one. So I'll just pick camera up now and uh, and show you how I fitted these uh, crank arms. Right, so now for for any of you experts out there, I'm not, I'm not doing this uh, really for you. This is from a beginner's perspective. So, and it's me, it's all probably my own ideas that might not uh, conform with an expert's ideas. So, it's just for beginners really. Oh, just caught. Uh, I don't know if you hear it squeaking. Caught control box. Uh, right, these crank arms, what I've done here, I've put 
two grub screws in each one, one, one in each side, uh, straight onto onto a flat on on, on axle. That's how they're held. And the, I must stress the importance they've got to be held right, really tightly, so they don't vibrate loose. And then uh, where where this stub axle comes off at crank here, through into connecting rod. I've put a cell lock pin right through that and right through stub axle and then in me uh, in my connecting rod here I've put a phosphor bronze bush with a flange on back so it's got like a, a bit of a thrust area to run on to on stub axle and that's on all four wheels <clears throat> and then to fasten my wheels to to the spindle not the spindle, the axle, I'm trying to get correct terminology here, to the axle, I mean there's many ways you could do this I suppose, but the way I've done it, I've milled a little pocket into each wheel so I could drill and tap and get a grub screw uh, right into axle. <clears throat> so that's how I've secured them. Uh, what else have I done? Now coming on to motor at bike, So what I've done here, I've got, I had a little bit of aluminium uh, angle on on stock. Like I said, I'm doing, the, I'm not buying anything for this. I'm doing everything with what I've got in my workshop and using it up, even if I've got to join pieces together. Uh, so all I've had to buy is the motor, the chain and sprockets, and the control panel, which I'll just show you, is down here. I've just got it all wired up temporarily and off a control panel this lead comes up to your control unit your joystick for your, for your speed control uh, a switch for forward and reverse and there'll be a horn button there and then this isolating key <coughs> so going back to the motor <coughs> yeah what I've done here I've put two pieces of aluminium angle back to back, or front to front rather, and uh, put four slots in, in the bottom of them, if you can see down here, I've put four uh, quarter slots on each corner, <coughs> and, that f and they drop onto four studs then, which I've welded to, to top it top plate and then my, my motor is then cradled inside inside this aluminium frame <clears throat> and then just on back up frame here I've put a little aluminium angle which bolts onto base and then bolts with a through a bolt to bulkhead plate and that way with two nuts on I can get fine adjustment forward and back <clears throat> to get my chain at right tension and then once I've got that them four studs I just tighten up and that, then my motor's secure and then my sprocket on my, mo on my spindle on my axle what I've done here there's a boss on sprocket I've pinned that sprocket straight through into the wheel two with two uh, grub screws and then I've drilled an hole straight through boss and right through axle and put a cell lock pin in to secure firmly secure that so everything is firmly secured now <coughs> and uh, me, me, me axle and me motor are giving me a 3 to 1 reduction and without going into all calculation, with diameter of my wheels, speed of my motor, reduction at sprockets, that's going to give me a, a, about a top speed of eight miles per hour, which is to, which is adequate for the track I'll be going on. So that's my motor, my crank arms, my wheels fastened, and everything on on that. I think I've told you now. And what I've also done since I last saw you, 
I've done my buffers and I'm just going to set camera up because I've got to take one apart anyway and I'll show you it, what, what I've done. Right, my buffers, what I've done here, I've, like I said, I, I've, I've make, I'm making it from items I've got in my workshop because uh, it's going to be a low budget build just to get me going on my first project. So, what I've done here, I'll just take it to pieces this and show you. I've got to take it to pieces anyway. It's spring loaded and that grub screw catches that. I'll, sh I'll show you in a minute. So what we've got, I had a piece of inch and a quarter tube on stock and I've cut it down to inch and a half long and I've welded in the back just a blanking plate so I could put a bolt straight through back and through the bulkhead with a nut on. That's what's holding them on. And then I had four of these springs on stock, so I bought it out to suit them springs, one in each, in each corner, but them springs aren't really strong enough. So what I decided to do, I've got four, four of these other springs, right, I could have cut them down, but what I did, I've counterboard this part out to accept them springs, and then that's given me a, a decent amount of tension. Right, so this is made out of a bit of stainless I had on stock, and it's inch and a half diameter, uh, and I've put a, a 3 sixteenths by half inch long uh, slot in, and so that's that's going to be my movement when it when it buffers. And really, I think I could have done with some two inch diameter. Because it looks a little bit out of proportion, I think. And like I said, I'm only a novice at this, and I might be doing it a totally different way to how experts do it, and how it should be done. This is just my idea how I've done it. And what happens is, this is a nice sliding fit into that tube, and when it's pushed in under pressure, under tension, I just line that slot up, tighten this grub screw till it locates, then back off half a turn, and that locates that bump buffer into that slot and gives me my tension and keeps everything captivated so it can't come out now. So lock tight that in when I've done when I've done my final assembly so it can't vibrate loose. So that's my buffers. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, right, going back to me, uh, my main chassis here. I think in my previous video I had I had two springs in each wheel, and I said they weren't really strong enough. So well, I've acquired four more springs that's a lot stronger, and I found out that just one spring. One of these stronger springs is adequate for what I need. So instead of having two in, I've only got one in now, so that's different. And then, uh, going back to my, my conrods, if you can see this little turn up here, this is upside down at the moment, obviously, there's a little hole goes through, straight through into that bronze bush, so you can lubricate each each uh, stub axle on your crank. So really, <coughs> I think that's everything I've updated now. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is, I'll try and uh, do, do a video, eat, eat probably eat one each week, to show you how far I'm getting. So. If you're interested, if you just subscribe to my channel, you'll I think you get a, a notification when I, when I put my next video up. And then my control panel, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on test today and get everything run in. I mean basically it's just joystick for accelerator, forward and reverse button, 
and a horn and an isolating switch. And it's got a really sensitive control so you can really get down to a slow speed. I think that's everything I've updated you now, so uh, I'm just going to turn it back over and then run it for uh, a while. Right, so <coughs> I've turned it back over now, so I'm going to run it for a while. And then what I've done, I've bought two standard run of the mill car batteries here, the type 06, 063, and they measure 210 long by 170 wide and and I, I'm hoping if I can just tilt camera back a little bit so you can see I'm hoping I'm going to get them two to be able to fit in, in body weight when I've done it to come over and then cab on back uh, with my control panel in cab and I think I'm just going to be able to get these two batteries to fit now I'm using these 063 car batteries because the they made in millions, and the, the cheapest you can buy, I think. I'll tell you how much these were. They were thir they were thirty pound each. I bought them uh, as a deal because I got two together. So that's the other thing I've had to buy besides my motor and my control panel. Uh, so that's it then, really. So I'll update you in a week's time and see if I've got a bit further because I've just got a few little jobs to do to plate work on chassis still, um, cosmetic jobs, and then I'll be starting on body work soon. So if you subscribe to my channel I think you'll get notified when, when I've done my next video if you're interested. And like I said, I'm just emphasising I'm a complete novice at this and I'm doing it from a beginner's perspective uh, up to the lowest budget I can make one just to get me up and running on my track so anyway thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you on my next video